Now, the knife attack on an army officer in uniform in Kent yesterday evening is not believed to be terror-related. Kent police say they are investigating whether there is a mental health factor at play here. A 24-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of attempted murder. The victim, believed to be in his 40s, was airlifted to hospital with serious injuries. Thomas Godfrey, a reporter at The Sun, is down there at the scene in Gillingham. Thomas, afternoon to you. Any more development on this? It was clearly a brutal, senseless attack on a serving um, uh, member of the army. The barracks are nearby. What more do we know? It was a horrific attack, and indeed, as you say, that man in his 40s left with wounds, we understand, all over his body. Uh, one of the people who have saw, saw it happen and indeed gave some first aid treatment to the officer last night say that he had severe wounds to his face as well. Uh, obviously not a good situation for him to be in. The good news, at least, is that he is now in a stable condition, though still serious in hospital. The latest at the scene this afternoon is that forensics officers and police dogs have arrived. They've entered a property and they're also searching a woodland area outside where we understand the man lived, where his wife ran from mid-attack last night in a bid to try and get this attacker off of her husband. Uh, this was in a residential area as well, right? I mean, this was not like in some quiet uh, back alley or something like that. This was in a very public place. This is a very residential area. There's a preschool around here, which many of the military families' children go to. Uh, this is a, a, a incredibly quiet zone. There's only a few cafes and a couple of corner shops. And, of course, you have the barracks as well. And it is a mixture of military families and normal local residents, many of whom are, are in shock over something like this occurring, especially with uh, the lines coming out last night that this man may have hovered in the area, loitered around, waiting, some witnesses said, for a soldier to attack. And we have, of course, seen similar things happen before, sadly, in this country. We, we await to find the, you know, the motivation. Kent police have talked about a potential mental health factor. That seems to be a bit of a standard reply these days. But we do know a 24-year-old man, man has been arrested. Mm, absolutely. And the latest developments we have this afternoon, which are available to have a look at on the Sun website, is photos of that 24-year-old man being arrested. He rode a Honda scooter away from the scene shortly after six o'clock yesterday half an hour later at 6 35 he was arrested at a residential address where we understand that man lives there are some photos online of him being hauled to a police car in handcuffs one witness who saw that arrest happen told me this afternoon that he didn't seem to be resisting and it was as if he he knew that uh, the police had caught up with him and I wonder, and again, we can only speculate at this point, Thomas, but, you know, whether this uh, mental health um, uh, reasoning has been, has been raised because um, the, 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 you know, this doesn't seem to be somebody who was trying to disguise themselves very well. They were caught very quickly. They were around the corner. Um, maybe some of those are the components that have led the police to, police to speculate on whether mental health was a factor. Of course, uh, and also this man's obviously not been named yet at the, the stage of the investigation is that. But as you say, if he was trying to flee and get away and avoid detection, he was he was arrested at his house, yeah. uh, which is obviously the first place the police would, in, indeed. would well, presumably well, look in an investigation like this. Indeed, and what, one may assume that the you know they, they were able to pinpoint the house because of the number plate on his moat. I don't know, but it, it did seem very easy and swift to catch this person. Um, and I understand a number of knives were also seized. Yeah, so we understand two, actually up to 10 inches long each will be used in the attack. Whether those knives were taken with him or not, we don't know. Obviously, forensics teams are searching for a field. Uh, and we can only speculate they may be doing that as he's potentially thrown those knives as he fled, trying to dispose of the weapon. Uh, it's under, in the photos of him being arrested, at least, there's no presence of those knives, and they are quite big yeah. kitchen knives too. Those two knives, if the police can recover them, will obviously be critical evidence uh, in, in prosecuting this case potentially going forward. Indeed. Thomas, thank you. Thomas Godfrey, a reporter at The Sun, he's there uh, at the scene in Gillingham. This is a, a particularly brutal attack and there is a resonance, I think, around military personnel getting attacked in this way. It does, of course, lead you to wonder whether there are other motives involved in this. I know that social media have gone absolutely nuts on speculation, who the person is, what their reason was. Of course it was a terrorist attack, even though the police are saying there is no evidence that this is a terror 
just terrorist attack, and then you get into the question of what constant, you know, all acts of barbarity are by definition uh, terror related in some respects, but perhaps not in the definition of what is a terrorist. Um, that's a whole other discussion. At the moment, a man has been arrested, and thankfully, the serving soldier is being treated in hospital and is, despite those serious injuries, is stable.